welcome back. We were talking about shifted circles and we're going to continue doing examples of shifted circles. So turn with me to the board. Our first example says, determine the coordinates of the circle center. So they want me to find where's the center of the circle and the radius, the length of the radius of that equation. Now, this doesn't look like what it's supposed to look like, right? It's supposed to look like this. x minus a squared plus y minus b squared is equal to the radius squared, right? It's supposed to have a square, and, and it doesn't. It's just got x squared minus 6x. It's not together in, in one square. So how do I do this? How do I get it back into this format? Because once it's in that format, then I can decide what is the x and the y coordinates of the center and what is the radius, right? So what I wanted to remind you guys of is a section that we've done in maths called completing the square. Now, I don't know if you guys remember this, but this was a way that we used to solve equations, right? So if I look at this equation, x squared minus 6x minus 6, what we did to solve this equation is we went and we took the coefficient of x, which is 6, well, minus 6 in this case, but we're just going to take the 6. I'm going to divide it by 2. I'm going to square it, and I'm going to add it. But remember, an equation is a scale, and so it only balances out if what I do to the left, I also do to the right. And so I've added 6 over 2 is 3. 3 squared is 9. I've added 9 on both sides. And why this is nice is because once I have it in this form, this I can factorize as a perfect square. This is x minus 3 all squared, and that's equal to 15. Now, we went further when we did this, and we actually solved for x. But right now, this is what I want. I want to take the x squared minus 6x, and I want to change it into an x minus 3, because this is what it's supposed to look like. And when I get it into the form that what it's supposed to look like, then I can decide where the center actually is. And so that's what we're going to do. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to complete the square for the x's. I'm going to complete the square for the y's. It's going to be quite long, so make sure that you write it quite neatly. I know that my handwriting is not the neatest, but make sure that yours is so that the marker can understand what you're doing. And so I've already completed the square in the previous slide for the x's. And what did we decide? Um, it was going to be I add 9 on both sides. Now, what do I do for the y? What we decided is I'm going to take the coefficient of y. I'm going to divide it by 2. I'm going to square it, and I'm going to add it. But what we decided is if I add it on the left, I also need to add it on the right. And so 2 over 2 is 1. 1 squared is 1. And so I need to add 1 on both sides. Again, why this is great is I've got it into a form where I can factorize it. This is x minus 3 squared. This is y plus 1 squared. On the right hand side I've got 6 plus 9, that's 15, plus 1 is equal to 16. And this is almost in the form what we want it to look like. We wanted the right hand side to be r squared, so I'm going to write one more line here, and I'm going to get x minus 3 squared plus y plus 1 squared is equal to 4 squared. Perfect. So now that I've got it in the standard form, now I can say what the center is. What did we decide? A minus 3 is going to shift it not left. It's going to be right. And so this is going to be 3. Plus 1 is going to shift it down. And so it's going to be at minus 1. That's going to be my center. And my radius is going to be equal to 4. Wonderful. So. 
if you're not 100% happy with the completing the square or the factorizing, go check back on your notes. Make sure that you know that because that's incredibly important for this section. Excellent. So let's move on to the next question. The next question says, determine the coordinates of the center of the circle and the length of the radius of that equation. It's exactly the same as the question that we just did. But the previous question, and let's go back to it, had x squared and y squared. Now what we have is we have 2x squared and 2y squared. Now, I can't have 2x squared. I can't have y squared. Otherwise, I won't be able to complete the square nicely like we did in the previous one. So I want it to be x squared. So what we can do here to manipulate it, and let me just erase all of that, is I can go and divide the whole left by 2 and the whole right by 2. Once I do that, I can get my x squared alone. It's not going to be 2x squared anymore. It's just going to be x squared. And that's what I want, right? And so I can split this up. I'm going to divide the first term by 2, and it's going to be x squared. The second term by 2, that's going to be 2x plus y squared plus 4y. And on the right, I'm going to get 1. And what you can see is I've left space for myself here so that I can automatically, in the next step, complete the square. This is what I want you guys to do, is when you complete the square, leave space for yourself so that it fits in nicely. You don't want to write another line for that. And what did we decide when I complete the square? And let me just choose a blue pen for this. I'm going to take the coefficient of x, and I'm going to divide that by 2, and I'm going to square it, and I'm going to add it. And what do I do? I add it on both sides. But 2 over 2 is 1. 1 squared is 1, so I'm going to add 1 on both sides. 4. Um, for the y, what do I do? I divide that by 2. I square it, and I add it. Where do I add it? on both sides, and so it's going to be 4 over 2 is 2, 2 squared is 4, and so I'm going to add 4 on both sides. And again, this is great. What, do I, what am I left with? I'm left with x squared plus 2x plus 1 plus y squared plus 4y plus 4 is equal to 6. And now I can go factorize the x or the section for the x, I can factorize the section for the y. And, and what am I left with? I'm left with x plus 1. Again, if the factorization is a little bit dodgy there, maybe go over that again. Make sure that you're comfortable with that because that's really important. And this is going to be y plus 2 all squared is equal to, and again, I'm going to write this as the square root of 6 squared. Wonderful. Now that I have it in the form, the standard form. Now I can decide what is the center. Well, the center, that plus 1 is going to shift it to the left, and so it's going to be minus 1, always in the opposite direction. Plus 2 is going to shift it down, so it's going to be minus 2. And my radius is equal to the square root of 6 units. I've solved my question. Again, when they ask a question like this, all I'm doing is I'm manipulating my equation so that I can get it into standard form. Wonderful. Let's move on to the next um, example. The next example is um, they say f6 and minus 4 is a point on the circle with center 3 and minus 4. And they want us to draw a rough sketch of the circle and label f, the point f. Now, I don't have that much time left. And so I'm going to try and move through it quite quickly. Um, if I go too quickly, um, you can watch it again, and, and let's see, um, let's see how, we, how we can do this. Okay, cool. So I'm going to draw my Cartesian plane. Um, they tell me that um, the circle center is at 3 and minus 4. So let's draw in 3 there. Um, minus 4 is there, so let's put our circle center there. And they've also told me that there's a point F which is there at 6 um, and also has a y value of minus 4. And so this is the center, but this is a random point on my graph, and they want me to draw a circle. Now, if everybody can see, and this is the trick to this question, is the radius is always going to be from the center to any point on my circle. And so if I move directly across 
because I can, because both of their y coordinates are minus four, I'm moving from three on the x-axis to six on the x-axis. And so does everybody see that distance there is three units? I've just moved three units to the right. There's three, there's four, there's five, and there's six. And so the radius of this circle is three. Now this gives me a little bit more information about where I must draw my circle. Because if it's, if it's three there, it's also gonna be three this way, and three units to the left from the center is going to be there at x equals zero. And if I go three units up from minus four from the center, it's gonna be here at minus one. And so if I draw my circle, I can't fit it in at the bottom of the screen, but that is what my circle is gonna look like. Um, wonderful. It's got a center, and when I drew my circle, by inspection, I worked out that the radius was equal to three. Now let's move on to the next question. They say determine the equation of the circle. Now, again, when it says determine the equation, whether it's an analytical geometry or functions, I'm always gonna start by writing down the standard form. Now the standard form is x minus a squared plus y minus b squared is equal to r squared. Um, they've told me that the center is three, and so it shifted three units to the right. Remember what we said, it always goes opposite, and so three to the right is gonna be x minus three. It's gone four units down. It should have been at the center, but now it's at minus four, and so what do we do? We always do opposite, and so this is gonna be y plus four. Excellent. And again, by inspection, and I'm going to go back to the previous slide, we saw that the radius ended up being three units just by inspection. I could have also gone and used the distance formula to calculate the distance to see what the actual distance was, but it ends up being three, and so I can say three. Again, what is that though? That is the radius squared, and so it's not three, it's three squared. So just be careful with that. Remember we discussed the radius and the radius squared, so just make sure that you know what you're doing. Um, the next question says, does the point three and minus two lie in the circle? Now, what we're doing is com we're combining what we did earlier with what we're doing now. I have the standard form. How did we decide if a point earlier lay on the graph? Well, didn't we just input our values. So I inputted x equals 3, I inputted y equals minus 2, and I saw, does it give me what it's supposed to give me? All right, so let's go back here. Our equation was x minus 3 squared plus y plus 4 squared. This is equal to 3 squared, which is equal to 9. And what I'm going to go do, and I'm going to change my pen color, is I'm going to take 3 and put it into x, I'm gonna take y, and I'm gonna put it into y, and what do I get there? I get three and minus two. Let's change back to the blue pen. Minus, oh, that's, that's a little bit light. Let me choose that one there. Minus three squared, uh, minus two plus four squared. Um, and what does that equal? Well, I'm gonna get zero squared. I'm gonna get minus two squared, and I end up getting 4. Now, what was it supposed to equal? It was supposed to equal 9, but it equals 4. And so, because 4 does not equal 9, all right, this equation isn't true, and therefore this point does not lie on my circle. All right, so always, how do I decide if something lies on the circle? I just input the values, and I see if it lies on the circle. Wonderful. That's all we have time for today. It's been great to be able to do this with you guys. Um, I hope you guys could read my writing, understand what I said, and um, are prepared well to know what to do. Thank you. See you next time. Goodbye.